welcome welcome beloved of god we resume psalm 131 as we commence we honor the lord we give him the praise we give him glory for he is a good god You are the one we call the true almighty God and we give you the praise. We give you all the glory and all the adoration our Father. We pray that you open our hearts that we may receive from you this time, O oh God. That you may minister to us your grace and your power. Open our eyes to see wonderful things. Open my eyes to see wonderful things out of your law hallelujah we worship him in the greek <laughs> maker of all the earth and the sky holy 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 king of glory worship the son of god Jesus Christ glory to the Holy Spirit glory to the Holy Spirit will rise you deserve all the honor you deserve all the honor you are the one we call the true almighty God You are the one we call the true almighty God You are the one we call the true almighty God We give you the praise Praise the holy God Maker of all heaven and earth Holy, holy, holy King of glory, worship the sun, glory to the Holy Spirit will rise. Call the true Almighty God, and we honor you. You are the one, you are the one, you are the one we call the true Almighty God. I am, you are the great God. Are yours, are yours, are yours. Heal the holy, holy. Are yours, are yours, are yours. Holy are you, O oh Lord. We thank you for the journey of 150 days of Psalms. We thank you for the Mission Mondays, O oh God. We thank you for the many souls that have been added to your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for delivering us from the snares of the enemy, O oh God. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor. Hallelujah. We give you the worship, O oh God. We give you the adoration. It's due only to your name. It's due only to your name. Oh, hallelujah. See Holy are you, 
Hallelujah. Ayos. Holy. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. We give you the worship, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are the one we call the true almighty God. That you have helped us. You are the one who has helped us, O oh God. And Lord, as we commence this wonderful time of just worshiping you and honoring you, Lord, and reading your word, we pray that you illuminate light and cause your word to become flesh in us in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Lord. We honor you. Psalm 131. Just three verses. Psalm 131 is a very powerful, powerful scripture that we come to at this time to glorify the name of the Lord and honor him. It says, out of the depths, this is verse 131, says a song of decrees, a song of ascents. It says, my heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quietened my soul like a wind child with his mother. Like a wind child is my soul within me. O oh Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. The lowliness and humility of a sanctified heart. When the love of God is reigning in the heart, It will, sub, it will subdue an inordinate self-love. To know God and our duty toward Him is the highest learning to be received in this world. The love of God reigning in your heart. Wow. I'm just coming back from Samburu. Where we went for a third visit successfully, the Lord was faithful, the journey before commencing had a lot of challenges, but the Lord had mercy and he enabled us to go. Verse 1 of Psalm 131 gives us a very incredible teaching about humility. The Lord teaching us, he said, my heart is not proud. O Lord, my eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. One of the greatest, the first sin of the earth was not Adam eating the forbidden fruit, but it was a sin of pride when the fallen angels and when Satan, out of his pride, exalted himself and wanted to rule and be God, yet he's a creature. A creature. So pride is a very dangerous kind of a approach to live in because again in proverbs it tells us that pride comes before a fall we move on to proverbs 21 by the grace of god i'm broadcasting this on the 30th of november at 7:28 in the kenyan am i bless the lord for a successful mission and we thank god for the testimonies that i will post them here on this page 150 days of psalms and also you can follow my handles at malcolm david on facebook and brother malcolm david on instagram and we thank god for that and also tiktok as um malcolm david we bless the name of the lord for his mercies towards us proverbs 21 it says the heart the king's heart is in the hand of the lord he directs it like a water course wherever he pleases says all a man's ways seem right to him but the lord weighs the heart to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the lord than sacrifice in first samuel chapter 15 verse 22 samuel met with saul and gave him these words he said does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? It says to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. 
This is the message that is coming expressly to us in quieting our soul, in calming and quieting our soul, we need to be able to walk in humility and also in obedience to the ways of the Lord. To do what is just and right is more, to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. One of the major lessons that I would want us to go home with is to notice that God moves through his word, and when we obey him, the heavens open more. He plants the heaven more. We see the grace of God more. In a place where there is a lot of shedding of blood, you will notice that one of the things that will lack in that location will be um, love. Love will be missing in that kind of a place. A place where people have landmines and war, like what's happening in Congo and things like that. It's basically something lacking love because blood is the life of any human being. And when it is shed, it begins to ask for vengeance from the earth. And the, only the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to cleanse all those sins. All those sins. And this is not just for a sect or a particular denomination. The blood of Jesus is universal. And this scripture that says to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. We see it exactly in the life of Jesus. When we read the Proverbs, we, we actually the Proverbs is also referred to as the promise. You notice that when we read the book of Proverbs, it's helping us to see how to govern, how our lives will be governed through God's word. And at times we know that the Bible, the Bible is saying this about us. And then we are not obeying. Remember this. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, are seen. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. Proverbs 21 verse 7. The liar, violence of the wicked will drag them away, for they refuse to do what is right. The way of the guilty is devious, but the conduct of the innocent is upright. It says, better to live on the corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife says the wicked man craves evil but his neighbor gets no mercy from him when a mocker is punished the simple gain wisdom when a wise man is instructed he gets knowledge the righteous one takes note of the house of the wicked and brings the wicked to ruin if a man shuts his ears to the cry of the weak of the poor he too will cry out and will not be answered a gift given in secret soothes anger, and a bribe concealed in the clock pacifies great wrath. We read this in um, the NIV 1984 version. We move on to verse 15. When justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. A man who strays from the path of understanding comes to rest in the company of the dead. He who loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine will never be rich. The wicked become a ransom for the righteous and the unfaithful for the upright. Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome wife, than with a quarrelsome and an ill-tempered wife. 20, 21 verse 20 the house of the wise in the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil but a foolish man devours all he has he who pursues righteousness and love finds life prosperity and honor a wise man attacks the city of the mighty and pulls down the stronghold in which they trust. I will pause here and mention something that can help you 
if at all your desire is to you know continue fulfilling the christian call one of the things that must happen is that the life of jesus should be what we emulate we see jesus in the wilderness we see jesus going through a time of testing he was fully man and fully god yet he endured for the sake of you and i so a wise man attacks the city of the mighty and pulls down the stronghold in which they trust you cannot stay in the same place with darkness you are light you are sun sun cannot stay with the moon the moon has to get power from the sun not vice versa the same way you must walk with wisdom to attack the city of the might because one of the things that i will tell you beloved of god is that the best strategy for war is attack there is no way you'll sit and say the enemy will not attack us let's just be patient let us just be quiet the enemy will come for you if you don't go for him and the generals who are wartime generals and the people who are you know who are always out there in the war, war zones are people that understand this principle that if you are in battle you don't sit to defend yourself you go towards the enemy if the enemy is crossing over to your line you must be able to attack in the name of jesus that's the best strategy and the wise man attacks the city of the mighty and pulls down the stronghold in which they trust any kind of stronghold right now that is in your path i decree in the name of jesus under the authority of this word and i decree and declare let that stronghold come down in the mighty name of jesus let that stronghold be pulled down in the mighty name of jesus we decree and declare let it be done as we come to this new year of 2023 in the coming days we are looking to god to attack the city of the mighty with him we shall conquer we shall do valiantly in the name of jesus he who guides he who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity Reduce the words you're speaking. Reduce them. Intensive. Be intentional about what you're saying. Because he who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. The proud and arrogant man, Mocha is his name. He behaves with overweening pride. Again, here we see one of the major enemies. The most among the most proud people i've come across are people in great need i've met a person who was hungry totally hungry and there was a lady in their neighborhood who sells food and i offered i said can i buy for you this meal the man looked at the meal and said no i don't eat maize and beans the man told me clear he was not sick not that it causes him any stomach trouble no he just looked at the person who was selling the food. He noticed this is that neighbor I don't talk to. I don't want to buy anything from him. And he in his foolish pride, his arrogance and pride will stick, will steal from you. Pride will steal from you. Pride and anger are the worst thieves of anybody's life. You know. Just God is gonna put exam everywhere you go. Like you are praying to God, oh God, give me patience. Good, wait for it. He's going to give you a test for to be patient. So you need to pray for grace that God will help us, that we may constantly be filled with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. We must constantly pray for spiritual wisdom and understanding because such circumstances will come our way that need us to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. So if we know the will of God, we will do it his way. We will not do it the way we want to do it. We want to do it according to him. Ah, I feel so excited because the Lord the other night, he mentioned to me, ministered to me and said, Son, keep to the simple gospel. Because God does is not like man. I am not like man, he said to me. He said, I do difficult things in simple ways. That's how God does it. You cannot explain how a tree forms roots and stands on a mountain trees standing in the mountain growing amongst rocks this is god 
In my last mission to Samburu, this one I've just come back, I did not know that I was going to scale that mountain. Otherwise, I would have prepared myself with mountain gear, camping gear, you know, going for a hike. Eh? But right there, just with sandals and no special equipment, the Lord said, scale up that mountain. And he gave me three guides. By the help of the Holy Spirit. And I had three of my, my children with me. We went up the mountain. And as I was going up the mountain, the Lord was showing me and he was teaching me about Abraham. The way that Abraham took his son Isaac to the mountainside to go and give a sacrifice to the Lord. And when God was already speaking to Abraham, he said to him, Give me a sacrifice of your son, your only son, give him to me. Abraham, the father of nations. He looked up to the Lord and he believed God. He did not start to announce to his son, You know what son, I'm going to sacrifice you. No, Abraham was a man of faith. He said, uh, The Lord shall provide. Let me tell you, beloved of God, Pride and arrogance will keep you from listening to the voice of the Lord. Proverbs 21, 24 If you want to find yourself in any category, This is the category of men and women that choose to turn away from God. What's the main challenge is overweening pride. And one thing about pride, it says, I am not proud. That's the worst thing about pride. Pride will always say, I am not proud. And right there, the man or the woman that is saying those things, pride is coming. Oh, beloved, would we pray that God will have mercy on us, that we will not allow pride in our lives. That will not allow pride, will not allow pride to come to our way. Because mocker, the Bible says, the proud and arrogant man, mocker is his name. There, there's a name. What name are you in the spirit? Could you be that you are there in church doing everything, but you are a mocker? You are not walking in the ways of God. You are proud and arrogant. Arrogance is about having everything to do with you, 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 you. I must enter heaven. Me, 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 me. I must me. Enter heaven, me. Pride and arrogance. When you just think everybody else should just be in hell and you should be in heaven alone and you say I will not reach out to anybody because for me, I am just looking for my way to go to heaven. Uh -uh. I don't want to mix with those people. Those people are evil. Those people are prostitutes. Those people are dark. I can't go there. They look bad. They smell bad. I can't go there. Proud and arrogant man. Mocha is his name. He behaves with overweening pride. That's the word of God. You must find yourself. You must be rebuked and receive the rebuke out with love because the word of God if it's just telling you you're blessed you're nice you're what then it is not the word of God the word of God is for correcting the word of God is for rebuking the word of God is for building the word of God we cannot stay without it no any kind of circumstance that comes, the word of God will be available to the sword to destroy every kind of, any kind of stronghold and pull down any stronghold in which we trust. Hallelujah. The Lord has always a great provision that nobody knows about. He knows that there is a, right now as Abraham was going up the mountain, hallelujah, there was a goat, uh, there was a, there was not a goat, it was a sheep, there was a sheep that was going up the mountain with him as he was moving with his son. Abraham did not see the ram, the ram was going up with him, it was going up, he did not know that when he was just about to slaughter his son, the Lord said an angel, the angel showed up. The angel said to him, do not harm your son. Look, hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mocha is his name. You must be able to be careful not to be Mocha. You must be careful not to walk in the ways of mockery and arrogance. Let me tell you, beloved, mockery is real. People are mocking God and they're in church. When you see the eye looking and you are a hand, you are saying, what is that white thing doing up there in the head? Eh? It thinks itself is so useful. 
And then the left ear is like, have you heard what I have heard? The right ear is complaining about the left ear. Say, no, you did not hear. It passed this side. And then the, the, the foot, the foot is saying, ah, you can't go anywhere without me. I am the one. Let me tell you, Mr. Foot, the Lord can have you amputated and the body will still be the body. Let me tell you, Mr. I, Mr. I, you can be without an eye, but you still be a body. Hallelujah. I come to encourage somebody here that you do not allow yourself into the place of pride and arrogance. Because the moment arrogance comes, pride comes, and you get a new name in the spirit, and the name is Mocha. You don't want to be called a Mocha, because when you're a Mocha, the Bible tells me in Psalms 1, that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the un godly or sit with the seat of sinners but his delight is in the is in the word of the lord in genesis 22 13 abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a sacred burnt offering instead of his son out of the abundance of his heart his mouth had spoken that god will provide so Abraham looked and called that place, Lord will provide. And this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, <laughs> Woo! glory to Jesus, it will be provided. It doesn't look like it's being provided for, but it is being provided for. We continue to see that after the provision of the Lord in Genesis 14, 22, 14 and 22, 15, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. There was a visitation a second time. And he said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And, your, and the sand of the seashore, your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off to Bathsheba and Abraham stayed in Bathsheba. Genesis 22. Beloved of God, I have quietened and calmed my soul. I have quietened and calmed my soul that I will not walk in pride and arrogance. That I will reduce my words. That if I want to say any more words, I will say, I have chosen to reduce my words. And if somebody is asking me, why are you saying that? I will say again, I have a, a limitation of the words I'm saying. I'm sorry, I don't have any more words. Proud and arrogant man. Mocha is his name and he behaves with overweening pride. Verse number 25. The sluggard's craving will be the death of him because his one hands refuse to work. He says all day long he craves for more but the righteous give without sparing. He says the sacrifice of the wicked is detestable. Hallelujah. How much more so? When brought with evil intent, says a false witness will perish, and whoever listens to him will be destroyed forever. A wicked man puts up a bold front, but an upright man gives thoughts to his ways. Hallelujah! There is no insight. Hallelujah! Listen to this. There is no wisdom. There is no insight. There is no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Memorize that one. My dear students and my dear young men and women that are watching me from across the globe. In your holidays, it is time to, instead of just playing games on the, on the computers and playing games on the phone, why don't you play a game of how many of you can remember as many scriptures as possible? Then let that be the game that you are playing. You can quote and quote and quote and quote. And the one who quotes the most wins. Those are the games you should be playing, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear sons and daughters. That there is no wisdom, 
No insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Verse 31 says, The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. 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 With God, with God, we shall gain the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We go now to the book of Ecclesiastes. As we continue to be in his presence and continue to honor him in every way. Hallelujah. We give him all the praise. We give him all the adoration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful. You are awesome. I glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. Keep away foolish pride for us. Keep away... Um, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Lord Jesus. There is none like you. You are mighty in all your ways, Lord. We give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to document what you're doing among us in a time like this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, shatter the enemy. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, shatter the enemy. We'll gain the victory. With God, we'll gain the victory. The house is made ready for the day of the battle. The victory belongs to the Lord. The sword and the shield and the beat and the bride. The victory belongs to the Lord. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God. Shatter the enemy. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, Hallelujah! To the enemy. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, we'll gain the victory. So the Israel trust in the Lord. The victory belongs to the Lord. Is he not their soul and their soul? The victory belongs to the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle. But victory belongs to the Lord. It rests with the Lord. Hallelujah. Get from them that be not your shield and your soul. The victory belongs to the Lord. With God, we gain the victory. With God, scatter the enemy. With God, Hallelujah! We gain the victory. Oh yes, we are God will gain the victory. With God, we'll gain the victory. With God, scatter the enemy. With Hallelujah! Yes, Lord! With God we'll gain the victory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for enabling us. And thank you for filling us. Precious Holy Spirit, we thank you. We honor you for always helping us and for always guiding us as we continue the journey of 150 days of psalms may your name be glorified father as we continue to press on and continue to hear from you in jesus name ecclesiastes 10 as dead flies give perfume a bad smell a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor the heart of the wise inclines to the right the heart of the fool to the left even as he walks along the road, the fool lacks sense and shows everyone how stupid he is. If a ruler's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Calmness can lay great errors to rest. 
There is an evil I have seen under the sun, the sort of error that arises from a ruler. Fools are put in many high positions, while the rich occupy the low ones. I have seen slaves on horseback, while princes go on foot like slaves. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it, whoever breaks through a wall may be beaten by a snake, whoever quarries stones may be injured by them, whoever splits logs may be endangered by them. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. If a snake bites before it is charmed, there is no profit for the charmer. Words from a wise man's mouth are gracious, but a fool is consumed by his own lips. At the beginning, his words are folly. At the end, they are wicked madness. And the fool multiplies words. No one knows what is coming. Who can tell him what will happen after him? A fool's work wearies him. He does not know the way to town. Woe to you, old land, whose king was a servant, and whose princes are feast in the morning. Blessed are you, old land, whose king is of noble birth, and whose princes eat at a proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. If a man is lazy, the rafters will sag. If his arms are idle, the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes life merry. But money is the answer for everything. I want you to know that money is not everything. One. Number two, the love of money is the root of evil. Money is not evil in itself. Money is not everything. Money is the answer for everything. Meaning that we need resources and finances to be able to do great works. Let me tell you something. The Lord has enough resources for his ministry. What he calls for, I have seen is always providing for. And one thing that I've chosen and have purpose now to focus my life on and put it in my life journey is to know that if the Lord builds the house, the laborers will not labor in vain. But if the Lord does not build a house, the laborers will labor in vain. That is the truth of the gospel. It says, don't revile the king even in your thoughts or cast the rich in your bedroom because a bird of the air may carry your words and a bird of the wing may report what you say. So you see, these proverbs are talking about words, 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 words. You're busy telling me, pastor, pray for me, pastor, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray, pray, pray. But are you watching what you are saying? What are the things you are saying? What are the things you are telling yourself? What are the things you are listening to? What's the kind of message you are listening to? What are you saying to yourself? If you say, I cannot make it, I will not make it, my life is difficult. That's exactly what you are planting. I noticed on this journey up the mountain, Mount Olulokwe, and I took time to explain to the locals and I told them, I am not going to look for God on the mountain. The God that I serve lives in me. He's in me. He's with me right now. Whether I go to the mountain or whether I'm here in the valley, the Lord is with me. But because He has asked me to go up to the mountain, hallelujah, and proclaim Psalm 148 verse 9 to Mount Olulokwe and tell Mount Olulokwe, Praise the Lord, you Mount Olulokwe, Sapasha Hill. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. You wild animals, you cattle, hallelujah. You flying birds. The Lord brought all these creatures on that journey. He taught me, he showed me different things. He showed me even stones that look like bread. And he said, you see, when Jesus was told in the wilderness, if you be said the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. Let me tell you, the stones were looking like bread. I took photos, I will show you. That the mountain has the capacity of shaping anything into the direction. I saw trees growing inside the rocks. I saw trees with so many branches. You don't know which branch is connected with each branch. The Samburu call it the uh, Karasha. I saw it. All, there's so many trees there. So many, so many different, different things the Lord showed me. And he also showed me something in the nature. That there is no thorn that looks like the other. 
For you, when you look at thorns, you think they are the same. But thorns don't look the same. Every thorn has its different height, different intensity, different kind of capacity, how it is shaped, how it looks like. The thorns are the fruit of the tree. Ah! Beloved, this God is awesome. And I've chosen to calm my spirit. I've chosen to quieten my spirit by reducing the words that bring sin. <laughs> so, are you going to run and run away from humans? Because humans are always speaking and talking. And myself, I like to talk. Now the Lord is saying, now, mm -mm, this is different. we got to move to Zechariah. We're moving now to Zechariah by the grace of God. We're moving to to Zechariah and, and we give him all the praise. We give him we give God all the praise. Hallelujah. Zechariah. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Breathe on your word, Lord Jesus. Breathe on your word. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I totally love that that uh, that wonderful uh, tune right there, and the Lord is helping us by His grace. We give Him all the praise. We move on now to the book of Zechariah, and we thank God for helping us this far. We give Him all the praise. We give Him all the adoration. We give Him all the praises because He's God all by Himself. He's continuing to help us. He's continuing to teach us. He's is is continuing to love us and. He's continued to show us great things and, and marvelous things. And we honor the Lord for his doing and his dealing and what he's teaching us to do and to believe him and to but trust him and give him all, to give him all the adoration that is due only to his name. That the name of the Lord is a holy name. It's not just any other name. It's the name above all names. It's the name that is living, that is active. That is sharper than a two-edged sword. And we give praise to the Lord for allowing us into this time of reading his word. We come to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah. Zechariah and chapter number 9. I believe we are, we are there. Uh, chapter 9 is where we are. We stopped at chapter 8. Now we are in chapter 9. And it says, the word of the Lord is against the land of Hadrach and will rest upon Damascus for the eyes of men and for all the tribes of Israel and are, are, are on the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, And upon Hamath too, which borders on it, and upon Tyre and Sidon, though they are very skillful, Tyre has built, has, Tyre, it says what? Has built herself a stronghold. She has heaped up silver like dust. And gold like the dirt of the street. But the Lord will take away her possessions and destroy her power on the sea. And she will be consumed by, by fire. Ashkelon will see it and fear. Gaza will read in agony. And Ekron too, for her hope will wither. Gaza will lose her king. And Ashkelon will be deserted. Foreigners will occupy Ashdod and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. I will take the blood from their mouths, the forbidden food, the forbidden food from their teeth, between their teeth. Those who are left will belong to our God and become leaders in Judah. And Ekron will be like the Jebusites. But I will defend my house against marauding forces. Never again will an oppressor overrun my people. For now, I am keeping watch. 
Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem. And the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Hallelujah! I will bend Judah as I bend my bow, and I will fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and make you like a warrior's sword. What a messianic prophecy. Hallelujah! We continue to proclaim. Then the Lord will appear over them. His arrow will flash like lightning. Lord, he worship you. It says, the sovereign Lord will sound the trumpet. Hallelujah. The Lord will sound the shofar himself. It says the sovereign Lord will sound the trumpet. He will march in the storms of the south. And the Lord Almighty will shield them. They will destroy and overcome with sling stones. They will drink and roar as with wine. They will be full like a bowl used for sprinkling the corners of the altar. The Lord their God will save them on that day as the flock of his people. They will sparkle in his land their jewels in a crown. How attractive and beautiful they will be. Grain will make the young men thrive. And new wine the young women. Wow. Wow. Wonderful words. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. That these words are living. These words are active. That Christ. Israel's king. Who became as meek and lowly one. Riding upon a donkey will be recognized by Israel and will bring them deliverance. Slay all enemies, all enemies, and extend his kingdom on all the earth. Beloved, these prophetic words, hallelujah. Zechariah 9 3, he says, And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold and heaped up silver as dust and fine gold as mire of the streets. There are a lot of you, you are heaping up silver, you are heaping up gold, you have so much of you. Then, without using it for the glory of God, you realize that you will not go anywhere with it. And yet there are people, even your relatives, you cannot help. <laughs> people you cannot say, I keep helping this man, I keep helping these people, they do not help me. This is the word of God to you. I have quietened my soul. You have to come to the place of humility and asking God for mercy. It may be difficult to love some people. But remember, Jesus died for us. He died for the centurion who pierced him with the, with the spear. He died for the Roman soldiers that were guarding him. Nothing much is told to us about them. But I do believe that there's something that happened in their lives when they witnessed the resurrection of the Lord. They cannot have remained as ordinary soldiers. We come to Galatians 6. What a delight to be in the house of the Lord and proclaiming the word of God and just continuing, just declaring it and being part of the word and honoring his word. Galatians 6 says, Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself that or you may also be tempted. 
He says, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to anyone else. For each one should carry his own load. Uh, his own load. If you are, you've ever come to Africa, and I pray that one day you come if you've not been to Africa. And if you are in Kenya and you've never seen an elephant, make an effort. There are so many places you can see elephants. Even your TV is one of them. You can look for an elephant if you have never seen one. Elephants carry a very heavy load. And on Saturday, on Sunday, Sunday of the 20, 27th, as we were ascending that hill, that mountain we were ascending, it got to a place where I was feeling so, oh God, I should go back now. It's too much. I'm feeling so much pain on my, on my feet. And oh God, I cannot keep up going. It's so tiring. So, but I had with me my children. <laughs> one is 15, another one is 13, another one was 11. The 11 year old was running up and down the mountain and he was saying, hey, he was, you know, it was his first time to get out of the city into such a far country. For him, it was just a walk. But for me, I had not been exercising to go for a hike like that. About 18 kilometers, walking on foot, with wrong shoes, sandals, actually, climbing a mountain full of rocks with sandals. And as we're going up, it was getting so much now. You know, it was becoming too much. And the sun was hot. It was up here. <laughs> Hallelujah! So as I continue to go up the mountain, Ah, oh Lord, it's painful. Lord, I want to go back. Oh, Lord, I want to go back. Oh, I remember with nostalgia, my goodness. I felt like going away. I said, Lord, this is too much. Let me go back. Then lying there on the ground, I saw this very incredible stick that had fallen down. And I just, you know, it's a place full of many things. So I saw that uh, stick. My guide had cut for me one small one and I was using it as well. So now I had two of them and I was walking like I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm skiing, you know, like how they ski in Switzerland. Now I was skiing on the rocks and I, <laughs> I was going up using the ski. But... Along the way, I saw elephant droppings. Ah, I said, Lord, you move three tons of a creature up this mountain. Three tons of a creature climbs the mountain on rocks. Ah, my father, I received new strength. I said, if the elephant can climb, hallelujah, a little weight in my body cannot stop me. And I said, I'm going up the mountain. I started to run. I ran a little bit, <sighs> ran out of breath. And I said, guys, we are going up. <laughs> Each one should carry his own load. Beloved of God, what an experience. What an experience. In the flesh, physically, climbing a mountain. And then the Lord is teaching you physical lessons with that climb. Showing you different things, different. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Many of you benefit from teachings online. From different men and women of God. You go implement those teachings. You get success. Then you run away and forget about that person. You do not go back to say thank you to Jesus. By sharing the good things you have received with the instructor. You say ah the man is in need now. Ah I'm sorry I'm sorry. I'm just in doing some project in my church. So I cannot be able to support that, that person. Yet you are drawing instruction from that person. I come to tell you today, anyone who receives instruction, 
in the word must share all good things with his instructor. He says, don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. How is God mocked? Arrogance and pride. We read it in the book of Proverbs. It says that anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. It says in verse 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Man reaps what he sows. The man, the one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap, will reap eternal life. So let us not become wary of doing good. Because in proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. If you see a street preacher preaching with very little resources and he's preaching the gospel, why walk away? Just stop by, buy him a cold bottle of water, give him something, give him some cash. Those of you who are well enabled, buy him a public address and tell him, Son of God, use that now. Stop working with that battery uh, operated substance that is not even being listened to. People cannot hear what he's saying. As we have opportunity, do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Whether they have done good to you, whether they look like you, whether they sing like you or not, you need to do the gospel, what the word of God says. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Yes. We must do it. There's no shortcut. And our great God does difficult things in a simple way. He causes the trees to grow on a steep mountain. He causes vegetation to grow under the sea so that the octopus can hide and camouflage from his enemies. He is the great God that creates the clouds and shapes them differently like a potter with clay. He's busy all the time causing the four winds to shape up the mountains. To shape up the clouds. To shape up the heavens. The heavens as you see them are shaped by the breath of his nostrils. Through his word he spoke. Let there be a separation between the heavens above and the heavens below. He spoke, he said, the waters above and the waters below. Let there be an expanse. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell somebody, be in the place of quieting your spirit. Allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse and to purify and that we may bear fruit in every good work growing in the knowledge of God. That we may pray, that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and that we may please Him in every way. Hallelujah. What a joy, beloved of God. What a joy. Galatians 6, 11 says, See what large letters I used to write to you with my own hand. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised obey the law. Yet they want to be circumcised that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even the Israel of God. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. I encourage you to read Ephesians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, and Revelation. Um, which one is it? Revelation, Revelation 16. I will be with you in the next video. I thank God for all of you that support this ministry. 
and I'm so excited and revived to do this work afresh with new zeal, feeling blessed and full of renewal, knowing that, you know, calling on the name of the Lord is a beautiful thing and I honor him and give him the praise. So kindly do those three assignments I've given you. Ephesians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4 and Revelation 16. I have to end the broadcast and bless the name of the Lord. If you want to get in touch with me, the numbers are right here on the description. You can be able to write to me on WhatsApp at plus 254-722-087087 and you will get a quick response. And also you can be able to send in your love gift and your offering through the same number and you can also be able to find me on PayPal at malcolminchrist at gmail.com. So the Lord bless you and the Lord favor you as we continue to do the work of the ministry together. Let us pray before we go away. This one never goes out of fashion. Calling you into the family of God. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is connected to Ephesians 2 verse 8. It says it's by grace through faith you have been saved. None of yourself. This is a gift of God. So we need to come to the place of allowing the Lord to bless us and to favor us and to shine his light upon us. Hallelujah. God bless you, beloved. May the favor of God surround you as with a shield and may his goodness and mercy be upon you now and beyond. I am Malcolm David. Shalom.